tendon, hematoxylin and eosin staining. A tendon is an example of dense regular connective tissue. This type of tissue is dominated by the intercellular substance in the form of type 1 and 5 collagen fibers with high tensile strength. Point mutations in the genes that determine proper synthesis of collagen lead to disturbances in its post-translational modification. This gives rise to collagenopathies characterized by excessive elasticity of collagen-rich regions, including tendons. The specimen is an isolated tendon stained with a routine histological staining method, H and E. This method does not allow to see the cross striation pattern characteristic of collagen. It is only visible in electron microscopy. Nevertheless, the presented cross-section shows thick bundles of collagen fibers running parallel to the long axis of the tendon. The pink color of eosin-stained collagen is due to the alkaline nature of this protein. The collagen fiber bundles are tightly packed, leaving little space for the scarce ground substance. Between the bundles, there are hematoxylin-stained nuclei of fibrocytes which are the dormant form of fibroblasts. These cells differ from their precursors by a reduced amount of cytoplasm, loss of basophilic character, and a small cell nucleus, which indicates limited DNA transcription. The fibrocytes present here are also referred to as tendon cells due to their characteristic extensions, which penetrate between the densely packed bundles of collagen fibers in the form of flat cytoplasmic fragments. They form threads known as the nodes of Ranvier. This orderly system can become disorganized as a result of tendon degeneration, known as tendinosis. They are manifested by a thickening of the tendon, increased number of fibrocytes, and poorly organized network of collagen fibers, including type 3 collagen. These are a result of overload or previous pathologies. Complete rupture of a tendon, spontaneous regeneration of which is virtually impossible and requires surgical intervention due to the scarce number of cells and poor vascularization is a particular problem. High hopes are put on reconstructive therapy using adipose tissue derived stem cells.